What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I as always am Matt Tuna Turner and today I've got something a little different for you guys. I am starting a new series here on the channel and this will be the first episode in that series. Um, that series will be sort of a vlog type type of thing. Um, as most of you or some of you may know, I recently moved to Taiwan. I packed up all my stuff, uh, sold what I could, and uh, got a job here in Taiwan, and I'm gone. Um, so I figured I would kind of blog or vlog my adventures here uh, for you guys to enjoy. Um, I'm calling it for now another foreigner in Taiwan because I know I'm not the only person doing this, but hopefully you enjoy what I will be producing. Um, I'm not entirely sure what format this is going to look like in the future. Uh, for a little while it might be kind of stunted, a little stilted uh, in its presentation uh, just because I haven't really been able to go out and experience a whole lot quite yet, plus um, I sold all my hardware, so I have to repurchase a bunch of hardware, um, so the quality will eventually improve, but I figured that since because I have been here out of quarantine, I should say, for about a month now, that I would do my first episode. Uh, so why don't I start, why don't I stop... Uh, jabbering on and why don't I tell you about it um, so first off uh, I do have a job here I'm not going to tell you where but as a foreigner you can probably guess um, but before I landed here obviously I had to take a plane ride um, I flew with Eva Air they're great uh, great airline I highly recommend them and I was lucky enough to get a bit of an upgrade um, so I actually flew here in style, which was nice because when I landed, oh boy, it was, it was, it was pretty much chaotic. Uh, they're still very serious about, uh, COVID here in Taiwan. Um, I still have to wear a mask outside. Um, I have to wear a mask at work and I had to go into a quarantine hotel and that was a process. Uh, so you land and there's a bunch of people with signs and you, they just kind of shuttle you into a line and then you're forced to buy a SIM card and then you have to fill out this form. Thankfully, there's people there to help you. Uh, they can turn it into English for me. Um, there are people who obviously all sorts of languages, um, but you fill out this form and then they shove you in another line and then eventually uh, you get in a cab and the cab just knows where to take you. So. A cab takes you to your quarantine hotel, which, by the way, you have to pay for. It's out of pocket, and it's not entirely cheap. Um, they take you to a quarantine hotel, and you sit there for eight days. Um, you're allowed to leave after four. Um, you can actually leave the hotel if you have a place to go, like a family member or a, or a, or a house. Um, but if you have a house, you can just go straight there to quarantine. Um, but I didn't. So after four days, um, I got, I went out on like a day pass, um, but I didn't know the process. So I, I, like any tourist would just like head down to the lobby and be like, cool, see you guys later. And they're like, no, 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 no. What are you doing? You need to do this and that and this and the next thing. I was like, oh no. Uh, so I went back up to my room and did what I had to do. And then I was allowed out for a day. Uh, you can see some of that here. So I'm finally allowed out of quarantine for a day pass. Uh, it was a hassle. I had to do a test and apply to go out. And yeah, but I'm out and I'm allowed to explore a little bit of the city. Uh, yeah, it's been four days inside a hotel room. I'm gonna be out. Uh, I must be in the boonies because there's not a whole lot going on now. Um, I tried to get money changed, couldn't. Um, I think I scared the poor bank tellers. Uh, now I'm heading to Starbucks because all I have is card and I know for a fact Starbucks will take card. So, uh, enjoy. And then I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably go back to my hotel and sit in quarantine until I go look at places to live. Yeah, well, we'll see. But quarantine was otherwise very boring. 
I did training for my job. Um, they did feed me uh, three square meals a day, which is nice. Um, some of them were traditionally Taiwanese. Some of them were very, very Western. I got pizza one night um, and I'm lactose intolerant. So you can imagine what that caused. But anyways, after eight days, I was finally let out of quarantine and I was shown some places by my boss. Um, and I finally settled on this one, uh, which you can kind of see behind me. It's not very big, uh, but it is cheap. So I took it, uh, and there's also laundry right outside my door, which is very handy and it's free. Um, yeah. So after that, uh, I start work obviously. Um, and I opened a bank account. That was an adventure in its own. Uh, as you can see here. So today I had the pleasure of opening a bank account. I now have my AR card, which is, um, I guess a temporary residency card kind of thing. It allows me to live here and work here for at least a year. Um, and then I can renew it. Um, but it also allows me to do things like get a bank account and a cell phone plan, which I still have to do. And Today, this morning, I went to go open a bank account. No, I'm not going to tell you where because that would be stupid. I went there and I have to tell you, I was there for over 90 minutes, close to two hours to open a bank account. It took forever. And when I tell you this woman had paperwork to do, I mean it, paperwork. It was like a mountain of paperwork. I was shocked. And not only was it in Chinese, she also had to do it in English because I'm a Loai and I don't know how to speak any Chinese or read any Chinese. So the poor woman had to make sure everything was like triple checked, this mountain of paperwork. The nice thing is at least I got the card right on the spot. I know at most places you have to mail away and get a card like a week later. Nope, I got the card right on the spot and it was ready to go, which was nice. But yeah, it took forever, and I feel so sorry for this poor woman. She was sighing, she was puffing, huffing and puffing. Man, so much paperwork, so much paperwork. I feel so sorry for her. But hey, I got a bank account now, I can get paid, and uh, I gotta get a cell phone now. See what I mean by stunted? Um, I've been kind of filming stuff here and there, uh, and I'm gonna be splicing it in. Um, as I go around, I have been out to Taipei a couple times. Um, the first time I went to Taipei, I went because I wanted to find out where the closest CrossFit gym is. Uh, so I wanted to see how long it would take me to get there. So I took the train. Um, turns out bus is faster. And then I just kind of explored. I went around. Uh, I didn't really have any other objective besides that. So I just took the train, random spots, walked around, saw stuff. Um, did some temple, I saw some temples and ate some food and eventually I went to Taipei 101, uh, which is the tallest building in Taiwan. Uh, it's huge, uh, but they have like a food court. Uh, so I got some bubble tea, uh, and then, uh, I came back home, but it was a nice way to kind of get out and see some stuff. Um, but before I go any further, I just want to talk about some cons. Um, so far, uh, Taiwan has been uh, enjoyable. Um, I have been enjoying my first month of freedom here. Uh, the job has been decent. Um, however, one thing, uh, one thing, because as some of you may know, I, I spent some time in Singapore. This isn't my first excursion to Asia or East Asia. Uh, I'd spent a number of years in Singapore. And so for me, everything will always kind of be compared to that, if that makes sense. Um, if you've ever been to Singapore, it's a, uh, it's a beautiful country. Um, and if you haven't been, I do recommend you go. Uh, go spend a weekend there, four days perfect but I just I that's what I got used to and that's kind of been my benchmark when um, when comparing uh, things like uh, when I was looking for other places to live um, and Taiwan uh, has, has been nice uh, however some cons uh, 
language barrier. Uh, in Singapore, there, everyone spoke English, so that was fine. But here, uh, the language barrier has has been difficult, which I guess is also kind of a pro because it's going to motivate me to really buckle down with my Mandarin lessons and, and, and learn the language. I've been using what I know a little bit here and there, um, but it's been difficult uh, trying to communicate and, and, and effectively get what and where I want. Um, Another thing, uh, and I don't know if this is a cultural thing or maybe it's just a function of the language. People here are very matter of fact, um, and like that, that's fine. Uh, not a knock on them. People from New York are very matter of fact. They don't have the time of day for for you know random stuff. They 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 got places to go and people to see. Uh, but I just uh, it, it, here I find it almost borderline rude and I don't know if it's because they just don't want to take the time with a foreigner which again is fine it's their prerogative um, but uh, it's something that I've come up against a couple times uh, just because I guess maybe being from the west coast of North America I'm used to certain certain formalities not really formalities but like uh, certain pleasantries I guess and and just a certain amount of uh, personality uh, in my conversations uh, and and uh, interactions with people uh, and lastly uh, the smells uh, that's not something I've been able to get used to and I'm not talking like like durian durian is, is fine uh, which uh, I have seen here um, I'm talking about like like sewage uh, there's open grates everywhere and you, you'll you'll be walking along and just get a waft of sewage uh, which is not not pleasant um, it's it's kind of gross actually uh, and then also stinky tofu uh, that's not something I came across very often in Singapore is mostly durian um, but stinky to tofu oof, oof. like durian is almost pleasant compared to stinky tofu stinky tofu is very sharp and it's like a shotgun to your nostrils not not the most pleasant experience um, However, I am kind of getting used to it. Uh, when I when I when I smell it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's stinky tofu, and I do want to try it. I do want to try it. That is something I, I definitely want to try, and I will get there. I'll get there eventually. Speaking of trying food, uh, I have tried some neat stuff. I have tried some neat stuff here, like for instance this. All right. Uh, first, please um, ignore my disheveled look. I got a little bit soggy. I, uh, I was walking home and I started to sprinkle and I knew that that meant a downpour was coming. So I tried to hurry up, but I got about three blocks away and it started to pour. I got caught in a downpour. Now I'm soggy and I'm kind of melting, but that's fine. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is because I went to a fried chicken place and I got some chicken butt. This is the first time I've ever had chicken butt, uh, and I got it spicy. I don't know if you can see that, but it's spicy. Nope, can't see it. That's okay. It's a little blurry. Um, you can see it's spicy, but this is the first time I've ever had chicken butt. It's the first time I've ever tried chicken butt. Um, I mean, it's it's deep fried, so anything deep fried tastes good. So why don't, why don't we just uh, why don't we give this a shot here? I'm sure this is super tasty, and we'll see how spicy it is. They asked me if I wanted spicy, I said yes, and they said a little, and I said no, a lot. I like spicy. So we'll see. Here goes nothing. Mmm. Oh, it's spicy. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. Tasty. Um, it's chewy, kind of fatty. Tastes like chicken. Mm. No, it's spicy, but not super spicy. It's not bad. Mm. Gonna have to eat more. Bon appetit. And also this. 
people are so desperate to get into this industry, they'll withstand some of this sort of abuse, right? Like we see it across many different facets oh. of gaming where it's like, Oh, that's not good. I'll come in and work for $4,000 oh. a year and do Oh, it's terrible. And, and work, you know, 14, 15 hours a day to get this stuff done. And like, it's not sustainable. And it's not okay. And this kind of stuff happens. As you can see, that last one was not very pleasant. Um, and on the food, the food has actually been... Uh, for the most part, really, really excellent, like really excellent um, and decently cheap. Not as cheap as Singapore, mind you, but pretty cheap. I've been able to find a few spots here and there. Uh, the beef noodle, excellent. Um, I went to I went to this place in New Taipei City, uh, a district called Ban Chao, uh, called Mian Mian Beef Noodle. Uh, I de definitely recommend checking it out. I um, uh, I found it, I just Googled it, uh, and I wanted some beef noodle, I happened to be in the area. Uh, they got like a whole bunch of like action figures and Funko Pops and stuff scattered around the restaurant, uh, and the food was, was excellent. Uh, I'm sure I'm rolling some footage. I didn't, I didn't capture a lot while I was there, um, but, I, but it was cool. Uh, I definitely want to go back and uh, I can put an address down below in the comments if you want to check it out as well. Uh, what else have I done? I've been to a drag show. I went to my first drag show. Uh, that was fun. Uh, I have made some friends here and a friend uh, was performing. So I went and watched them perform at a drag show. It was at a comedy club in Taipei. Uh, I think the district was Zhongshan, I think. Um, but it was, it was, it was wonderful. Uh, it was humorous. Uh, the host was hilarious. Uh, and my friend performed wonderfully. Absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, and I got beef noodle before going there as well. Um, and then another thing I was trying to do, um, I was trying to find like, uh, like a Walmart or like a Canadian equivalent would be like the superstore, like a Loblaws. But I don't think I've, quite found it um, I was looking for like a big box retailer where I could not only buy groceries but you know video games uh, household stuff like like plastic containers uh, like tubs um, toilet paper that kind of stuff um, and I found something similar uh, it's called Carrefour but it's not really like a Walmart or a superstore per se. It's more like a grocery store uh, that happens to sell um, like some other stuff. Uh, so I've been there a few times, um, but it isn't quite what I'm looking for. So if you're in Taiwan and if you know of something that I'm looking for, like more like uh, a Walmart, like big box, I'm not talking like Best Buy. Um, I'm talking like, like a Walmart super center uh, or like a real Canadian superstore, if you're from Canada, um, that sells not only groceries, like produce and stuff, but also like electronics, uh, DVDs, uh, household stuff, uh, greeting cards, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. If it exists, I honestly don't know. But Carrefour has been the closest I've found. Uh, but that is, again, more like a like a grocery store than it is like one of those super centers. Um, I'm not looking quite for like something as big as a Costco, but yeah, like a, a Walmart or like I said, a real Canadian superstore, Loblaws, whatever they're called. Um, and finally, uh, I have gone out a few times with some colleagues. Uh, we've gone out uh, for, for some drinks, some adult beverages uh, from time to time. Um, and I've learned that darts are a really big thing here and so I've been playing darts and I'm not very good at darts but I'm getting better at darts and I think I will continue to play darts because uh, I actually quite enjoy it uh, and it's a lot of fun great way to pass an evening uh, especially uh, in the absence of like a pool table or video games um, I do want to check out a barcade that will be coming I'll do an episode about that for sure uh, I've been trying to scope out a few. Uh, I've also been looking for places to buy and play uh, Magic the Gathering. Uh, I did buy some packs and they're in Chinese, um, which is great. Uh, helped me learn the language. Um, but yeah, 
uh, that's that's kind of what I've been doing for like my first month of freedom out of quarantine. Uh, like I said, I'm not entirely sure what kind of format these episodes are going to take. I think in the future they're going to be more like excursion and sightseeing type of things rather than me just telling you about my week because uh, I don't I don't, I don't think that'll be all too interesting. Um, it was interesting being here during the Nancy Pelosi visit uh, for those of you that follow geopolitics and then the uh, following PLA drills that they did around the island. Um, funny thing is life just kind of went on here. No one really noticed. Um, but that, that was, that was uh, I wouldn't say stressful, but it was interesting to be kind of a part of that. Um, a lot of, a lot of people were glued to the news to see if that plane was going to land. And sure enough, it did. Um, so that was, that was like a big, big to do for about three days. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's kind of it for now. Um, I do go to my favorite bow ante, uh, you can see here, dumpling bun. I quite enjoy it. Um, I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. So I think I'm going to eat my bows. And, uh, if you like this, please do subscribe. Let me know, uh, if there's things for, from Taiwan that you want to see me do or go to. Um, I'm open to suggestions, uh, like I said, I'm uh, not sure which way this is going to go. Um, and uh, the quality will improve as I gain more hardware. And uh, yeah, uh, until the next time, 再见!